model steam engines top tip time part 71. This video contains edited extracts from a series that I offer to my Patreon supporters. The series is called How to Build a Model Steam Engine. If you're not a Patreon supporter, then please become a Patreon supporter. The address is on screen at the moment. And if you are a Patreon supporter watching this episode, I do apologise, because you can already see it on Patreon. These are all edited extracts from part 14 of How to Build a Model Steam Engine. Let the show begin. The quality of the casting seems okay. A bit of fettling here and there is required, but that's normal. I'll speed up the video for this next bit, otherwise it's going to get very slow and boring. All I'm doing is cleaning up the casting with a file. I'm using a large coarse file for the inside area, but when it gets to the outer areas I'm using a needle file. This part is quite tricky to clean up, this is a stuffing box for the gland. That's why I'm using such a fine file, because I need to clean it up without changing its shape. The casting is only just big enough to machine it to the size on the drawing. I don't know what's going on here. I've machined a lot of castings in my time, and normally model steam engine castings have a tolerance. This one, for instance, is only just big enough to allow me to get the finished dimension, and the sides of the steam chest have got no tolerance whatsoever. If I take any metal off the side of the steam chest after I cleaned it up, it will be undersized. This is a shot of the steam cylinder just sat on the bed, and this part is well on the way. The steam chest that I'm about to make will sit on top of the port face. I could machine the steam chest using the four jaw chuck, but I thought just for a change I'll use the milling machine. So what's all the hammering about? Well this is a soft hammer, and it just makes sure that the part is accurately mounted in the machine vise. In the past, viewers who watch these videos have informed me that I should use parallels for packing pieces like this, but I don't have any parallels. I just use random pieces of metal for packing that I find in the workshop and they seem to be parallel enough for the job. I'm now going to machine the other side of the steam chest, but before I do that I'm cleaning the area very thoroughly. And once again, exactly as before, I tap the part into position using a soft hammer. Please note this is very important. On this casting, the stuffing gland part, that's the part on the left hand side, is not in the middle. It's not supposed to be in the middle, because when the steam chest is fitted on the port face, there needs to be some clearance at the lowest part of the steam chest to allow for the slide valve. Almost all of the machining operations in this video are speeded up, just because I may slip into a coma midway through the edit. And if there are any mice watching this video, they will probably throw themselves on the traps. I needed one final piece of packing to raise the steam chest to the height so I could get the finished dimension. The ruler was perfect. And one more time, a bit of minor ultra-violence on the casting using a soft hammer. Do not use a normal hammer, you will fracture the casting. By tapping the part like this, it makes sure that it's fully down onto the packings. This is a slightly deeper cut, so I'm observing the normal protocol, which is always to cut in the direction that the cutter is rotating, so that the work is against the direction of rotation. I'm not taking very deep cuts anyway, and I've just gone back the wrong way as you've just seen, and here we go once again. But normally you need to go in the direction that the cutter is cutting. After rubbing the part on a piece of emery cloth to remove any sharp edges, I'm applying some marking out blue to the end of the part, because now I need to drill two holes in the end of this part, one all the way through, one eighth of an inch diameter, and the other one a quarter of an inch diameter for the depth of the stuffing box. Following the drawing to the letter for this part, the centre line needs to be exactly a quarter of an inch from the lowest part of the steam chest. It's important to get this part right, and as you can see, it's exactly in the middle both ways. If you don't have a surface plate, you could always use a piece of plate glass, but you'll still need to buy a height gauge, a very useful piece of workshop equipment. Surface plates are also good for doing this. I'm cleaning up the part on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper on the surface plate. And as I've just said, you can use a piece of glass, but the only problem with that is if you drop anything on it, it's going to fracture. That's why I use a surface plate. I've refitted the four jaw chuck into the Boxford lathe, 
and here I'm using the four jaw chuck to hold the steam chest in position so I can drill the end of it. And as you've just seen, I've used a 90 degree square to verify that the part is at 90 degrees to the chuck. This is a precision item, not only does the hole need to be exactly in the centre, it needs to be perfectly aligned with the steam chest. This is a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill, you don't need to use a reamer, a drill will be fine for this job. What you're supposed to do is drill a hole in the far end of the steam chest to support the valve rod. And this hole in the other end is supposed to be smaller than 1 8 of an inch diameter, but I don't do that. Whatever the diameter of the valve rod is, that is the size of hole that a drill at the other end of the steam chest inside it. Now it's time to enlarge part of this 8 of an inch diameter hole for a depth of a quarter of an inch, and this will hold the valve packing. In a previous clip I showed the machining of this part to a quarter of an inch as well. So now I can go a little bit further in with the 1 8 of an inch diameter drill. I don't want to go in too far because on the other end of the steam chest there is a knobbly bit. And this knobbly bit is the part of the steam chest that accommodates the valve spindle. I've turned the casting around in the four jaw chuck and I'm machining this end now. Then finally finishing it off with a piece of emery cloth. So what's with the bits of brass? You must have noticed these pieces of brass packings. Well, have a look at the state of them after they've been used to clamp the steam chest into the forge or chuck. They really are badly marked. Because I don't have a surface grinder, and who does have a surface grinder in the workshop? Certainly not me. I have to clean up parts the hard way. I'm using, first of all, emery cloth, followed by wet or dry sandpaper, and the lubricant I'm using is WD-40. This takes a long, long time and requires a lot of patience. But in the end it's worth it because the machine surfaces become very flat indeed and they're probably good enough to fit together without using any gaskets, but I am going to use gaskets. Because I definitely do not want any steam leaks. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.